Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The Case of the Overheated Boiler It was just past midnight when the smoke detector in the school boiler room triggered the alarm. When the fire department arrived, they opened the boiler room door and were greeted with wet, white smoke. Using their infrared camera, they discovered the source of the heat and smoke the cast iron sectional boiler. The visibility was next to zero as they walked down the steps and they could not see the boiler on off switch. The firefighters opened the hose nozzle and aimed it at the boiler while another firefighter shut off the gas valve feeding the boiler. The boiler popped and banged loudly. The firefighters used their saw to cut away the boiler jacket to be sure the fire was hot. Satisfied the fire was extinguished, they relaxed. They did not realize how close to death they were. It was steam, not smoke, that triggered the smoke alarm that night. When the firefighters sprayed cold water on a hot boiler, the boiler sections cracked rather than explode, which is a common effect. Catastrophic explosions can occur when cool water meets an overheated boiler. When cold water is sprayed on steam, it causes the steam to condense, which could cause condensate-induced water hammer. This phenomenon can instantly generate pressures as high as 1,500 PSI, or 10 times the pressure rating of Schedule 40 pipe and fittings. In the end, the boiler was ruined, and the school shut down because of no heat. As I viewed the boiler room and the damage a few days later, I couldn't help but think how lucky they were and how this could have all been avoided. ASME, or the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, has a code called CSD-1, or Controls and Safety Devices for Automatically Fired Boilers. This code is adopted in most states, but not in this state. In section CE-110, the code calls for a remote shutdown switch or circuit breaker at every exit from the boiler room. The door switch shuts off the fuel or energy supply if activated. If this boiler room had this switch, the firefighters could have turned off the boiler from the door, waited for the boiler to cool, and the maintenance department could have assessed the damage. Instead, the school was shut down for the rest of the winter and a new heating system was required. When using a door switch, there are a couple of things to remember. The switch must be adequately marked to be quickly found in an emergency. The code stipulates the switch is installed on the outside wall of the boiler room so the person does not have to enter the room. This has not worked out well in schools as the kids like to shut off the heat as they walk by. I prefer installing the switch just inside the boiler room door, out of the reach of curious students. There are several options to consider when installing the switch. A traditional single pull switch could be mistaken for a light switch and shut off when leaving the room. When leaving the boiler room, the push button switch could be bumped by mistake, shutting off the boiler. Some installers connect the switch to an audible or visual alarm. The last option is a break glass station. These are not my favorite type of switches as you need replacement glass to reset the switch. As part of the preventive maintenance call, I like to try the door switches to verify they will work. I prefer something which can reset immediately after the test. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites. The Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective 
and I hope to see you on the next case.